Awesome tank. Ready to dive deep? I'm Randy Rogen. I am mostly a coral reef biologist. Randy is a researcher here, and she understands coral in Belize kind of like you know your own backyard. It's kind of um, my home away from home. So there are definitely places when I die where I know every single coral head, the same way you'd know your garden or your yard where you'd know every plant. After a while, what you really begin to look for are changes. You know, I notice when there's something new going on in my backyard coral reef. A slight increase in water temperature, just a degree or two warmer than usual, can have an impact on coral. Next, we're gonna go inside one of these coral in front of you for a very personal temperature tale. See this coral on screen? Now try to find it in the exhibit. It may no longer be there, but if it is, it's hanging out in the top of the exhibit just to the left of center. Got it? Right. Now stand in front of it and hold up your iPod. We're going in. Yeah. Now that we're inside the coral tissue, you can see that it lives cheek to cheek with algae or symbionts, which give the coral its brilliant colors. They also provide sugars to the coral who show their love by pumping out yummy nutrients for the symbiotes to feed on. All happy and lovely until the surrounding ocean heats up. While many factors can affect symbionts, warmer oceans have been shown to drive a coral and symbiotes apart. The coral is left naked and white or bleached. No more pretty symbiote dress to strut around in. Like any breakup, coral and its symbiotes can get back together. But when they don't, it's called catastrophic bleaching and can lead to coral death. If you want to try and imagine how rising water temperatures would affect this tank of coral, hold up your iPod again. Yeah, make sure you're still standing in front of the same coral we zoomed into. Now align your iPod with the coral in the video. Did you find it? Good. Now watch how that coral might change with warmer temperatures. That's what high temperatures can do to coral. So is this the future of coral around the world? Well, some species of coral don't need symbionts, and those that do stand a better chance of survival if we can reduce the human stresses placed on them. To get involved in such efforts, see the links at neaq.org tours.